Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, What's New in Creo 6.0? Unlock the latest 3D in 3D CAD with PTC Creo, new capabilities in augmented reality, real-time simulation, and design for additive manufacturing. Also, modernization of the overall user experience and interface on top of key production, key productivity improvements, sorry. <laughs> Let me show you uh, who's presenting today's webinar. Andrew is a technical sales specialist at PTC and he specializes in Creoparmetric and the augmented reality platform Euphoria Studio. And now let me tell you a little bit about Novage. This is our product page for PTC Creo. And Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and most importantly, no headaches. Check us out at Novage.com. And for more daily software news and limited time promotion, you can always uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. Last but not least, today's uh, presentation is free and, has been, and will be recorded, so you can watch it again on Vimeo and YouTube. Just search for Novag. Now let me switch uh, to end your screen, which is what everybody is here for today. Take it away, Andrew. Okay, sounds good to me. Just give me one second to share my monitor. Sure. And let me know when you can see that. We can see you. All right, perfect. So hello everyone, a quick introduction about myself. My name is Andrew Leedy. I'm a application engineer here at PTC. I'm out of our Greensburg, Pennsylvania office, so slightly less uh, weather, worse weather probably than California, but it's nice here anyway. We're right outside Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I'll be taking you through a demonstration of what's new in Creo 6. We'll go through, it, it's a pretty heavy deck in terms of just some very general productivity enhancements, simulation capabilities that we've worked on, augmented reality into our added manufacturing stuff that we've expanded upon. And then at the, end of the at the end of the slide deck we have here, I have a demonstration to go through a typical workflow process in Creo 6. <clears throat> so just to start off, I usually like to take a step back before I talk about the capabilities of anything within Creo to talk about some of the challenges that we were hearing from our customers out in the market and really why we made these changes and what, what, and, and what we added into Creo. And one of the biggest challenges we're seeing today is this idea of merging the digital world and the physical world and how all of this affects our product development. We have all kinds of new technology in different software packages that are emerging, that are impacting this transformation. You got all kinds of tools to do simulations, to, uh, to take your design into manufacturing, to add feedback from the field back into design all these different packages and all these different software that we're using today. So we try to push as much of that just into Creo uh, in general. So today we're gonna be talking about AR capabilities in Creo, simulation driven design, design for added manufacturing, and then just some of those general enhancements that people are looking for as they see, as they move from different versions of Creo Parametric. So the first section to talk about is just this idea of augmented reality. And this is something that we're getting further and further into as a company at PTC and that we wanted to be reflected in our actual CAD software. So all the way back in Creo 4, two years ago, we included some of these augmented reality capabilities so that you can share a model off through just an email, send it to someone's phone, and then they can place it on their desk or in their workstation and visualize the actual product that you're going through and designing. So great for things like design review or just for just general information about the product that you're building with, uh, with just a bunch of stakeholders that are interested in it. So within Creo 6, we've expanded this capability. So we can now publish up to 10 models to view in augmented reality. And it's basically a one-click publish in terms of uh, I have my model and I publish it off to the cloud and then someone's able to view it. So it's extremely easy to share off this design information now. In Creo 6, we also added the ability to generate a QR code that can just be scanned to launch these experiences. And we have added support for HoloLens. So if you wanna be able to visualize your product and actually walk around it using a wearable, we can now support sending this over to a HoloLens and then being able to see things that are made within Creo. And also new within Creo 6, they've 
added in the ability to control the viewing rights a little bit clearer. So you can choose whether experiences are going to be public or restricted. So whether you want to be very careful if you're dealing with some very sensitive data and you don't want anyone outside the company to be able to see it, you can restrict it. And you can also, also add multiple emails at once for this to share off. So we just made it a lot easier to get this out to whoever needs to actually view the product in a more immersive way than what you would traditionally be able to see just within a, uh, just a software package. We also made a lot of improvements around simulation-driven design within Creo. And there was a key partnership that we made last year with Ansys Technology to incorporate some of their engine, some of their simulation engine, directly into Creo Parametric in the form of our product called Creo Simulation Live. So a traditional development process uh, in regards to adding in simulation just has historic flaws. We're seeing that there's a lot of people that are needing to consult simulation ex experts to bring this in to the overall process. We're seeing issues where I might not actually be able to use the design model that I have. I might need a simplified copy before I send it over to my analyst, before I send it over to a separate simulation package. Overall, we're just seeing a very iterative design process when it comes to simulation-driven design. We're seeing multiple different design iterations, multiple different back and forth between the, uh, the, uh, the analyst expert. It just overall slows down the process. So we tried to streamline that within Creo 6 with this partnership with ANSYS. So to address these challenges, we brought the simulation world into our actual CAD environment, bringing us real-time simulation and kind of combining these concept and design phases, especially early on in the process, to be one particular piece with simulation driving uh, in the background at all times. So Career Simulation Live is tackling all those different challenges that we just talked about by bringing those capabilities into Creo. It's similar to our Creo Simulate extension, if anyone has ever heard of that, but this time it is real-time simulation. It's not a traditional method where you mesh it and then wait for it to run and then view the results. This is actually running in the background every single time I make any kind of change onto my actual design here. So as I'm going through this slide, there's going to be a quick video show, showcasing some of the capabilities of this that I'll go through here as well. So the focus of this is going to be on speed and interactivity. So it's going to run in the background every time I go to make a change on the model. In terms of actually setting up the analysis, it's very easy. Much like Creo Simulate, you're mostly using the actual Creo surfaces and geometry to actually apply this. So here they're applied a fixed constraint on the model. Then on the top, they applied a force. And then we can also add in different force constraints if we want in different load sets. But as soon as they press play simulate, it basically generates the results instantaneously. I think this, this particular model to get the final result, you can see it working and then now it's finished. It took about five seconds to actually run this entire process. So it's extremely quick to get some results and it's extremely responsive. So anytime we go to add in a feature, delete a feature, modify a feature, you're able to okay out of the, the definition of the edit you just did, add in the feature, career regenerates, and then you instantaneously see the results of that simulation that you just put in. And this is made for really any CAD engineer. The initial capabilities here are to support structural, thermal, and modal analysis. With some time in the future, there's going to be some CFD analysis added in here as well. So again, the idea is very quick to go through and modify play with really any kind of what if scenarios you want. There we just went through and updated the actual simulation as opposed to updating the model. Here we see a high point of stress and we might want to add in a new feature. And once again, this could be any change. Here we're just using a standard extrude feature. It could be a flexible modeling change. We could do this at the assembly level and actually add in new parts for strength. Whatever it's going to be, anything that I'm normally doing within Creo, we're able to handle within this particular extension. So we're very excited to bring this capability into Creo Parametric 6.0. Now, coming in the next release of Creo 6.0.1, we're going to be able to leverage mechanism loads. So from our mechanism design options extension, we can already push loads in from Creo Simulate, but we can also now do it with mechanism with the next release of Creo. We can also promote part-level boundary conditions to a top-level assembly. So I can take all the conditions I placed on this model and push it up to a higher level to be able to run a, a more in-depth analysis on that. And I could also do things like defining simulation bodies within the next release of Creo. And the best part about all this as well is that this is all ported back to Creo 4 and Creo 5. So simulation live is not just available in Creo 6. It's also already available in Creo 5 and going to be available within Creo 4, I believe, at the start of next month is the current uh, release date for that. 
So now some just general productivity enhancements. This is gonna be kind of a wide ranging uh, types of changes that have actually been made. So hopefully some of these affect you. A lot of the things that you're gonna see, especially in this demonstration right here, are, you're, are gonna be really uh, in almost any feature that we do. So we've expanded the idea of this mini toolbar in Career 4 through Career 5 and now in Career 6. Anytime I select on anything, I get this mini toolbar that gives me quick access to important design options. So as we're going through this, this quick demonstration here and they're building out this actual feature, notice we're not going up to the ribbon to define any of these. As we add in a side two, as we choose how the first side and the second side are actually gonna be extruded out, we didn't at one point go up to the, to the ribbon to choose any of those particular options. All of that is just on the left click toolbar. So we started that within Creo 4, but they vastly expanded it with the release of Creo 6. So now it's in a lot more features and a lot more options are available just from that little mini toolbar. We've also cleared up the visibility on our model tree, which is something that uh, we've actually been, have highly requested. So when a part is active, everything else in my assembly is gonna be grayed out. So it's really easy to find what I'm currently working with. And if I use my insert mode to put me up somewhere else, it actually puts a very clear green bar to show or a blue bar to show me exactly where I am. So it makes it a lot easier just to work in your model tree, especially once it starts to get very heavy, it's clear exactly what piece I'm actually currently working on. And they also made some changes to the filters. Common filters can be on by default. And as we move from part to part or from career session to career session, it's gonna save off any kind of configuration that I do. So it uh, makes it a lot easier to, instead of having to always go back up to my filter options and say, hey, I wanna see my features in assembly, I can just have that on by default and then choose if I wanna put it off at that point from on. There were also some changes to uh, some graphing. So for example, what we're looking at here is a surface analysis. So it's a lot easier in terms of an interface to do the setup and control of these graphs. So you can go into a lot of detail in terms of how exactly do I want this to look, and it makes it really easy to give you a good export that you can send off to, uh, you know, maybe an Excel document or some other document that you're storing some of this design information. So you have very fine control over X, Y, Z, line options, legend options, uh, gradient options just for the background. A lot easier just to get the general look and feel that you want out of some of these graphs that you're generating within Creo. For a lot of features, we have up, updated skins and dashboards. So something you'll notice almost instantaneously, when you go to make a new feature, there's a lot more clarity up in this, in the, in this ribbon. Some of these things that were just in drop downs before are now just their own separate options. So there's not really a need to retrain. The functionality is still basically the same for all these, a lot of these different features. It's just a little bit easier to get to where you're supposed to be going with some of these features that you're putting in here. And it's a little bit easier, especially to learn where certain things are. And speaking of learning, there's also direct access to help from within a lot of features. Previously, you could have gotten to some of these different help pages by, just by typing in the search bar, finding the particular feature that you want to be looking at, and then search for it, and then a help document comes up. But now, uh, all the way over there on the right, which is kind of the continuation of this uh, ribbon object you're seeing up here, you can see exactly what feature you're doing and you can read more about it in terms of how you're actually supposed to use it. So just direct help links to uh, within a lot of our features to get you to the help that you might need to actually learn how to place this feature in your assembly. There have been some product productivity changes for sheet metal as well. So just as we try to make things a little bit clearer and clean things up for our standard features, we do the same thing with our sheet metal features. So it's more intuitive in terms of working with some of these walls that we're currently looking at here. There's better options for corners, seams, reliefs. What you're seeing in the demonstration is just going through some of these different configuration options and deciding how it's gonna look. So here we're looking at a corner relief with a bunch of the different types of uh, configurations that you can choose to do with that then they're easily changing it to another type of relief. Here's just a normal uh, V notch, whatever it's gonna be. And then you always get that preview within Creo whenever you do any of these changes to see exactly what, uh, what you're actually gonna be doing and make sure that you're okay with the feature before you okay it off. There's also a new dashboard for merging of our walls. So it's, a, again, a little bit easier to work with some of these sheet metal pieces that can be, uh, with some of these features, it can be kind of stubborn to get it right. 
um, you know, every single time right away. So they tried to clean some of that up and make it a little bit easier to use some of those different features. Now, something that was added within Creo 5 was this idea of our volumetric sweep. Uh, so they added an option to persist the helical trajectory curve that's generated off of these. So I can use these for things like manufacturing. So if I do a volume sweep, sweep to simulate a machine path that's actually going to be drilling this away or cutting this material down, now I can reuse this for my actual machining path in something like Creo NC or really for any other design that I want. This, this curve can persist and be used for other functions and other features within Creo. Now there's some new options for some other features like datum points. I can do projections for, for these. I can, uh, well, I could do that before, but now we can project onto some other different things, planar surfaces, datum planes, straight edges, or lines can now all be options in terms of the projection for my datum points. Another small thing, but again, highly requested was this configuration option to set the drill hole tip angle. So this was something that we chose number by default, and that wasn't the same number that everyone was using. And of course, people get sick of going through and editing the same option every single time they make a feature. So now you have a configuration option to be able to modify what the default is going to be for that particular feature there. In the world of model-based definition, we made some more improvements. These improvements started once again within Creo 4. I think you're seeing a kind of a similarity between a lot of what I'm saying. Uh, we're just expanding upon some of this. So in model-based definition, we cleaned up some of the user interface. We made some changes to how GD and T and dimensioning were added. Well, now those changes have been pushed to things like notes. So there's a dedicated ribbon tab to be able to go through and modify exactly what these are going to be, uh, what they're going to be looking like. We cleaned up how they're actually placed on top of the model. So for anyone who's looking to get more into this world of 3D annotations, or if you're already in it, you will see this particular enhancement, um, hopefully as you go into Creo 6 here. They also made some smaller changes around semantic definition and just some flexibility when you're moving an annotation to from one feature to another feature, in terms of how references and such are applied. So it's just a little bit easier and a little bit cleaned up in terms of how these are actually gonna be placed on the actual model that you're seeing. Another small change, but something that was again requested, automatic not notification for new maintenance releases. So as we're doing faster and faster releases of Creo, we want to make sure that you are able to keep up to date if you want to. So now whenever a new update comes out, you get a notification telling you. So now it's telling me that 6.0.0.2 is out and what in particular is new. So you can also keep up with some of these new things that, you're, that you probably want to take a look at if you didn't know that they were modified or changed. But if you're a system administrator and you're locked to a certain version of Creo and you don't want your, uh, your employees to be able to update themselves, you can all, always block this notification and, and make it so that you can actually install the update if you want to. For Render Studio, we have some better options for rendering. This is an extension to be able to get some more realistic, uh, basically pictures of your models and some renders of your model. They, we've added in the emissive appearances for uh, different parts. So this helps with the kind of thought of light coming out from the object. So you can choose a component or a surface, in this case, these light bulbs up here, probably chose that inner filament on the light bulb and they said, hey, this is a light source. So have everything else in the environment react to that particular light source. And then there's different options to configure, of course, how much light is actually gonna be emitted from that object. So whether you have something like the sun or something like an actual light bulb there. Render Studio now also supports animations. So uh, some of these animations that we were doing in things like mechanism design, we can now support those with a fully rendered object. So just get some more realistic renderings of an object actually in motion. That's all supported within Creo 6 as well. In the detailing world, here's another change. Drawing names can automatically be extracted from my parts. That's a new option that we added in. So depending on what template we use and what our part name is going to be, we can use the actual drawing model file name option to be able to inherit some of that from something else. Some other small usability stuff. Uh, so changing colors, uh, we have this available for dimensions and in our edit definition windows. So not only can you change everything about the rest of the model and all the different colors and what you selected in the background of Creo, you can also change what the background is going to be and the colors of your things like these dimensions and edit definition stuff. So again, just a little bit easier to customize now and to be able to clean up some things like that. 
So those were a lot of those productivity enhancements. So some of those smaller things that are just about more of ease of use within Creo. So now the next section of this is all about some changes that we made in the world of designing for added manufacturing. So this is something that we, uh, we had an extension in Creo 4 called our added manufacturing design extension. It was all about putting lattices in. And through Creo 5 into Creo 6, we've added in some new lattice options. So what we're looking at here is something called stochastic lattices. Think of like foam interconnected beams that are just connected really randomly. That is a new option choice in our added manufacturing extension. So I can go through and determine exactly how this is gonna look. We can get some really unique features from this that we probably wouldn't really be able to model in any other way. I mean, you can think how difficult it would be to actually model something like this, all those individual beams. Now you can basically generate something like this instantaneously within Creo. So just going through a few different configuration options, and now I have some solid 3D geometry in the form of this lattice feature that I have in here. There's also new formula-driven lattices with this, within this extension. So crazy shapes that a 3D printer really doesn't have any problems with, but it adds in a lot of advantages into our design. And one key part about this is that they're self-supporting lattice types. And what that means is just because of how close, and you can see again in the demonstration going through some of these different options, just because of how close some of these walls are to each other, many times, depending on the actual orientation of your 3D print, you're not gonna need to build support material to actually support these. They're self-supporting lattice. So less material being used in the print process, that means less cost being made onto the actual part that we're adding but still fulfilling the goal of adding in some strength of the part and reducing that mass. And in many cases, again, maybe no support material would actually be generated for this part because of that self-supporting nature. So in the demonstration, I'll go into a little more detail in terms of these formula-driven lattice types that we're seeing here. Something else that we added in was this idea of custom lattices, which as soon as we added lattice options into Creo, First question I got on a demonstration was, hey, can I do my own lattice types? Well, now with Creo 6, they added that ability. So custom lattices can be added into your Creo models now with the added manufacturing extension. So I have a particular part modeled out here and I wanna add this in as a lattice and uh, basically just going through some of the preview options. So there it is, the original part doesn't really look too great. We probably wanna scale this down a little bit so I have the same different options that I have in terms of scale and lattice types that I did within my other lattice features, except this time it's gonna to be towards that custom lattice shape that we have here. So just showing what that would look like, uh, here's my custom lattice, just as a part file added in to this particular uh, support structure that we have. In terms of lattice transitions, adding transitions between lattice walls was also added better support for uh, the lattices in some of these cases. Here's the no transitions added, and here it is with transitions. Just a bunch of configuration options to determine when do I actually wanna put some more dense lattice and where do I wanna have a little bit less support. Overall, this can give you a better uh, supported model that overall uses less material and it's just, it's just a better bottle in general if you're able to utilize something like this correctly. We've also added in a build direction analysis. So this actually walks us through the process of determining our lattice orientation. Many times, another piece of software would probably be needed to be able to find the optimal orientation for our particular part. So this allows me to optimize the design for manufacturing by highlighting some of these critical faces that I'm concerned with. And if you're unfamiliar with what you're seeing here, critical angle, subcritical angle, this is basically in kind of the lowest manner, it's just determining where am I actually gonna need support material on this part. And most of the time, these critical angles are determined by your actual 3D printer capabilities. And you can even do something called a downskin analysis where it takes that optimal uh, critical angle and subcritical angle values you had and does an optimization. Here you can see it going through the process of reaching its convergence to determine what orientation am I gonna reduce that highly critical angle uh, while hopefully having some of the less colored parts on my particular model. So which position should I actually build this in? And what you're gonna get is most of the time, an orientation you probably wouldn't have thought of before. This is kind of on an angle. You really wouldn't have been able to generate this just through guess and check. It would have been very difficult to figure out how this was gonna be, how you were gonna put this on a tray. Most of the time you probably just put it flat down, but this allows you to save maybe on print time, most of the time just on support material for like an FDM printer. 
In this case, the optimization requires our added manufacturing plus extension, and not just the regular added manufacturing extension. There's also extended support for this new emerging file type that we have, 3MF file format. This supports materials and colors in our print files. It's more just for like higher fidelity models. A, a lot of other pieces of software communicate with this file type in particular a little bit better. And within Windows 10, we also get a preview for some of these different file, uh, files that we'd have in this particular type. You can also do your slicing directly from within Creo with this extension. So there's slicing support to be able to generate the CLI files and also to be able to visualize the slicing in our build tray within Creo. So I can export it in that format if I'd rather get it to the printer in, uh, and communicate with the printer in that way as opposed to just sending off a, a standard STL or a 3MF file. And in the world of topology optimization, we made some changes. Topology optimization now supports for working with uh, in the context of our assemblies. So designing that part overall there. And it also has some improvements in terms of some of these results that we can generate, better animations, better control over the results, and more tools to edit the resulting geometry to be able to go through and determine how I actually want to make this as a final Creo part and how this is actually going to, uh, how it's going to construct that. So previously, it was always as a freestyle shape within Creo. Now I can say reconstruct it just with facets, or uh, and I could choose how what level of degree I actually want to add detail. So here are the subdivisional nodes on this particular rabbit here. They're widely spaced out. It's going to be harder to modify this than it would be for a piece like this that has them really close to each other. So now I can step into a, a demonstration of some of this workflow within Creo. Just as a very high level, to talk about what our roadmap for Creo is going forward. So we have moved to yearly releases where we have a major release basically on every third one. So Creo 4 was one of our major releases. And then people who want to stay up to date and see some of these new improvements every year can go to Creo 5 and Creo 6, with Creo 7 being the next uh, real major release of Creo with a lot of functionality that's going to be planned. And then from there on, 8 and 9 are going to be more minor releases and then 10 and so on and so forth going up this timetable here. So I can move into a demonstration here to show what some of this would actually look like within Creo. And, and really this is gonna be tailored more towards our added manufacturing capabilities that we just talked about at, towards the end of that demonstration. So for this demonstration of Creo 6, we're gonna take a look at our swing arm assembly. So using a traditional manufacturing technique, this particular part we're gonna be looking at would have to be individual parts that are going to be machined and then they're going to be assembled maybe welded together to put them together so even for a simple part like this might be a kind of a complicated build process in terms of actually getting this out but with some of these new improvements in 3d printing we're going to choose to actually 3d print that particular component and put that on our on our bike to reduce down on the cost of that manufacturing method we talked about so we'll close out of that entire polaris snowmobile and we'll just open up that one particular file to be able to begin, uh, begin working on optimizing the part. So I can op uh, open up that primitive lattice part. We've already started on optimizing this. So we put in a basic lattice geometry here that's just going to be the start of my design. And within Creo, if you haven't seen our added manufacturing extension, placing in the lattice is really as easy as cutting off an area and then determining if, where the bounding surfaces are. So the entire inside of that block right there, the front and the back, and then the lattice that we choose is just uh, uh, just instantly generated in between that bounding area into the, to the best that it can based off of the size of the lattice and different options that you've included with it. You can also have uh, the capabilities to shell out an entire part if you don't want to have to do, uh, you know, if you don't have to cut out all the material from the inside of something, or I can convert an entire solid in a lattice as well. Now within Creo 6, we added in some of these formula-driven lattice types. So just going through some of these particular options, we now have primitive, gyroid, and diamond lattice types, which are basically just driven by a formula. There is a mathematical formula that's determining how that's actually going to be made to make them self-supporting. So we can go through some of those configurations like wall thickness and size of the lattice, and then just put it into our model. So we're able to get some more complicated geometry that would be very difficult to actually model in a traditional manner, especially if we're patterning it out all like this on this particular part. So these new lattice types just give us a lot of new design options that I can explore without having to worry about 
them being uh, a lattice that's a little bit on the weaker end or a lattice that's going to have to require a ton of support material to actually go through and construct. Now, in addition to the new lattice types, there have been improvements to the actual lattice propagation and the generation. So it's a lot faster. If you've used this extension, you might have seen when you try to do something more complicated, you could be waiting a few seconds in terms of actually generating all the lattice, especially if you're getting into the hundreds of thousands of lattices that you're actually placing on here. So they made some general improvements to the extension to make it a lot faster in terms of generating the lattice on top of the entire area that you'd like to place this under. And Creo 6 also supports, once again, those stochastic lattice types, more of that foam type of look with the interconnected beams, and also custom lattice types as well. Now, with the lattice type that we want chosen, I, want, I might want to share this design with anyone else who needs to see it. So this was something that we had added in Creo 4, this idea of augmented reality within our actual design. And the setup for this is extremely easy. This box that you're seeing here is basically just the floor that I want to place this on. So wherever my floor is, my model is going to sit on top of it in the exact orientation that I have it there. And then it's just a one-click button to publish this, decide what kind of quality you want to push this off as, and then you can choose my model, the, the target, that spatial target, that box on the ground, and then that will push it up into the cloud. And I can share this off with anyone on my design team or any other stakeholders who are interested in seeing this, uh, this whole design. And Creo 6 actually streamlined the process of sharing that off with multiple people at once. If I have the need to share this off with, you know, 15, 20 different people, I don't have to send them off as individual emails. So once we share off this model, I might want to go through and verify this design, which we have another tool within Creo. This is just our standard simulation tool called Creo Simulate. So I can use this to go through and actually verify that this is the part I want and this is what I actually want to go through and 3D print. So we already have a simulation set up to save some of the time. So we can just open that up very easily and I can see some of the different loads and constraints that we've applied onto this. So here's my four loads. And then I have two other constraints on top of the model and I have an analysis already set up so we can go through and actually view what the results were for this particular analysis. So the story we're telling with Creo is that we don't have to go out of Creo to, to delve into some of these different things that we might be concerned about with our model. We can generate a design part. We can go through, add in some strength and do some optimization with these lattice features. We can go through and simulate it within Creo and actually be able to see if there's any issues. And here I can see on my particular component, because of how we put the actual forces, I might have an issue right there. It looks like there's a pretty high amount of stress concentrated in one location. So that's where my failure is going to occur. So using Creo Simulate or Creo Simulation Live, I can go through and actually be able to find that problem, highlight it, and maybe go through and fix it at that point without ever having to go through and print this off and figure out that, hey, you had a problem early in the design process, you gotta go back and actually redesign everything. So all these tools we're offering within Creo and that we keep adding in with these different Creo releases just adds more and more capabilities to the hands of the everyday engineer who's building out a part and just wants to make sure that this part is the best that it can be and that's actually gonna work in the environment that we're placing this under. So here's my part against the original. We can compare the analysis if we need to. So now I'm, uh, I'm okay with the actual design that we came for this. So now I wanna go and prepare this for 3D printing. So one of those new things that we had come out with with Atom Manufacturing was this build position a command to go through and analyze the best positioning of my part. And this is something that we would probably have to use another piece of software to go through and actually determine Hey, what's what you know? Depending on what STL I have, how should I actually place this into my 3D printer? So I can go through, adjust some of these different values. I have my critical angle for my printer, subcritical angles that I'm concerned with. I can go do a downscan area analysis, and this will actually go through and instead of controlling it just myself and going through and determining how I want to place it on the tray, if I have that Atom Manufacturing Plus, I can go through and have Creo do it automatically for me. So I can look at the convergence graph and see how close we're getting and how many iterations. So here it did about 50 iterations for the part in all kinds of different uh, orientations and worked on finding the most optimal location for that. So as we close out of here, it's gonna adjust my model into the proper orientation. And in Creo 6, we can now save this file format off in a different manner. So that's gonna be that 3MF file format. 
this is a file format that can communicate with a lot of other software packages if we need to send this off to a printer or to do some further optimization if we want to somewhere else. Basically, it's just going to send a higher fidelity model than we might have been able to be, uh, before. And once again, send that over to a 3D uh, printer or another platform that can accept it. So here we'll do a save as a copy, go to my 3D printing folder, make it say 3MF as that new option. And we still have the standard STL or standard part if I want to save it off in that manner. This just gives me another option to be able to bring that over. So now we want to go into our actual trace up, which has been something that's been around since Creo 3 actually, to be able to go through, visualize this on a tray. We just added more and more capabilities as we've gone on in terms of sizing the tray and then determining how you're actually going to put the part on here. Since we already did that build direction analysis, I can utilize that from within the part to place that directly on the tray. And then we can also go through and do things like edit the actual support structure for this. And since we went through and actually and changed the critical angle on my part to 30, I might want to go through and change that particular parameter so it actually builds the support material in the right manner. And I could save the profile or I can just go back to my default every single time. And then generating the support makes an actual part file for that particular support. So if I want to do some further modification under the support structure, I can open up that individual part file and start working on it. And then from here, I can preview for 3D printing. A new option in Creo 6 was to be able to actually slice this from within Creo. So this improves the actual uh, printability of the geometry that we're creating. So don't allow two different packages to interpret the geometry in two different ways. Now Creo can go through, generate a CLI file for this particular part. This opens up the amount of printers that we can actually support from within Creo. And if I ever wanna go back and display all these particular slices, I can see exactly what it has done at all the different steps of this overall process. So I can see what it has done in turn, and you can see it also building out my support material as well and the different color on the slice. So layer by layer, you can look at all 1,144 layers of this if I want to, see if we're gonna have any issues. And then from here, I can export my part. So I can either save the printing job for later use, and that will actually save the tray off, so I don't have to reposition it the next time I open this up. Uh, and I could also go through and uh, just save it off as that 3MF file format or as just a standard F uh, STL. And within Windows 10, the 3MF file format actually allows you to get this cool visualization. So you can see exactly what part you're working on um, whenever you just highlight over it within Windows Explorer. So overall, that was a quick demonstration of some of those new capabilities within Creo and a quick workflow and a work process within Creo. So with that, that is the material that I had prepared for the what's new. So at this time, I can open up to questions. If anyone on the line has any questions or concerns or uh, just wondering if something else that you're working with has changed within Creo 6. Thanks, Andrew. That was amazing. We have one question, in fact. Does Creo okay. 6, does Creo 6 offer stress-defined lattices for additive manufacturing so that the lattices are made automatically denser when the stress is greater? If they're made out of, I'm sorry, what did you say? Um, I'll read it again. The Creo 6 offers stress-defined lattices for additive manufacturing so that the lattices are made automatically denser when the stress is greater. Um, so, so there's, I guess, one part to that. So I, I guess to get a lattice that is automatically defined and changed based off of a stress value that you want to place it under, you'd have to pair this with Creo Simulate. And in Creo Simulate, you can do an optimization study. And what an optimization study allows you to do is pick a dimension within your particular part, and it will optimize that against the stress value that you think that this is going to be placed under. Um, so you can optimize it for stress, but also change the dimension as you're doing that to minimize it. And since these lattices are full Creo features, they're actually dimensioned off. So all the different things for our standard lattice types, you can go through and editing the dimensions for them. So you can choose the beam width, the angle that it's going to be, that the beams might be at for like a 3D lattice, like a cell center lattice, the radius of the inner, uh, of the inner lattice. So you can actually be able to optimize that part and the lattice throughout your entire part to, uh, depending on what stress it's going to see. Okay. I don't think that's supported with the formula driven lattices yet though. Those are generate on their own and there, there isn't dimensions associated with them. There's just the configuration options to, to build the formula driven lattices. Okay. Thanks for your honest answer. And while we wait for other questions, if, 
there is any. I'm going to just temporarily take the screen back to thank everybody for joining us today. And also, I want to again show you the page where we have Creo on our catalog. And I want to remind everyone to visit novage.com. And uh, here you can find, find Creo 6 plus all the Creo extensions, including Creo Simulate. And uh, Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster service, and my favorite, no headaches. So remember to visit Novage.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for the latest releases and limited time promotions. Andrew, I don't see any other questions, so I want to remind everybody to watch uh, today's uh, webinar recording on Vimeo and YouTube as early as this afternoon. Just search for Novag. Thanks again for a fantastic demo and looking forward to working with you again. Bye-bye, Andrew. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.